deserve to win. I knew if I built up enough lead with reds and pinks, that there was a good chance I wasn't going to need to, to, to get them two reds. Do you remember what you said, Judge? Well, you can, don't you? I can't remember now. I didn't remember that, Judge. I, I think we both had an horrendous day, but I said, like, I'd never want to go through that again or something like that. Yeah, I can't remember. Like that, yeah. What did you say, Judge? Just a congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. Give me half your money, please. <laughs> <laughs> Same feeling when you win it now as when you won it as a kid? No, different, different feeling. Um, I think you're much more aware of the process now. When I was first coming to the scene, I was just kind of just smashing everything in and just loving it, you know. Whereas now you kind of look. I think the older you get, the more you start to appreciate that you know you might not be playing in as many as these matches. You take it for granted when you first come on because you think, well, you know, it's just another tournament. But I've actually learned that you know, and if it's one bit of thing, I'd obviously say to someone is just appreciate every result you get and every win because one day you're gonna you might you know you're not gonna be able to get it you know like Davis and Hendry and people like that it happens to everyone you know you can't you're not always gonna be able to win tournaments. That six world title will it happen? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Who knows, you know um I'd, I'd I'd love to think that I've got another one in me. Judd, this season your aims, your views is it to get that world championship? Is that the main to goal? me, um, my, my main two goals this year are the, the, the Masters I've never really done well in. I want to do well in that one. And uh, the World Championship sooner rather than later. I want to sort of get to the final again and win, hopefully. OK, lads, uh, thank you for your time today. It's been a real pleasure. And hopefully we'll see you both in many more major finals. Thank you. Thank you. There ain't many things better than making a 147 at snooker. And today I'm going to be showing you how I we go about making that magical 147 break. This is a type of opportunity that when it presents itself, the first thing that comes to mind is a 147. You've got maybe six, seven, eight reds out in the open. The black is not tied up, so there's no excuse for not being able to get a red, black, red, black. So we have a simple red to start off with. And each ball that I part will be played with a stun screw or a run through shot. I've screwed back along this line here to try and leave myself a perfect angle to either just follow through or ideally I would have liked to have been here. But the whole point of making a 147 is always trying to leave yourself options. A bit of screw and a little bit of side to bring me over towards the black. Now I'm going to play a slight little run through. Trying to always leave myself an angle on the black. You don't ever really want to get straight on the black because all you can do is go forwards and backwards if you're straight. There you go, straight in the middle. A lot of people always ask me how many shots I'm thinking ahead and in this instance I'm thinking I want to clear this red, get onto the black to get on this red. So three shots ahead here. and I've got on the black perfect. I'm using that red as a blocker to stay on the black. And this is where I've made a mistake. I've tied this red up. I've now got this plant in the middle, which should free up a couple of these reds. Got a slight angle on the black, which is gonna take my white out to here. I'm going to play for this red in this corner. I've left myself a slight angle on this red here, so I can either stun it in or I can just run it through and play a little cannon off of this, which will open these two up. So I think I'm going to play the little cannon shot. Oh, got through the gap. I've got myself a tough shot on this red. Managed to part that one. And it's vitally important to get an angle on this black now to dislodge these two reds because it's a potable position. It's come out perfect. Oh, left myself a bit of an angle there. Too much of an angle. So what I might have to do here is screw into here, try and flick this red over the corner. On the block. 
and you can't play it any better than that. I've managed to pot 14 reds, 14 blacks. I've now got the perfect opportunity to pot this red, get myself on the black. Now, the difficult shot here is leaving myself the right angle on the black to get to the yellow. But at this point, a drilling is taking over, so you're thinking, I've just got to trust my ability now. And now I'm going to run through a sequence of how I would normally pot the colours. So here we have the yellow. A lot of the shots that I've been talking about all through this break have been little soft stun screws, so it's very important you start to try and perfect that shot. But again, a little soft screw to try and leave yourself a nice angle on the brown to take ourselves from blue to pink. It's very important we stay this side of the blue. If we come round here, then it means we've got to go all the way around the table. And again, you want to leave yourself just below about there is OK. So now I'm feeling really confident. I feel like I'm, I'm probably just one shot away now from actually making a 147. And that's the shot. Now you can't foul. Nice and firm. Straight through the ball. In it goes. And there you go. A 147. It's been a big year for Karen Wilson. The 23-year-old shot the snooker world two months ago, winning the Shanghai Masters, beating the likes of Joe Perry, Ding Junhui and Mark Allen, before downing Judd Trump 10-9 in the final. Ranked world number 54 at the time, Wilson also became the lowest-ranked player to win a ranking title since 2005. Ronnie went to meet Snooker's newest star at his club in Kettering. So this is where you practice. I know that used to be your table, but now you've got, kind of gone to the private room over there. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's obviously a very busy club, and it was just nice to sort of get away and um, concentrate on my own, yeah. and sort of get out of the busy environment. And how long have you been practicing here? Um, oh, five years. Five years. Um, originally, I was playing in the club in Kettering, but. These have took me under my wing and, yeah, they've been great to me. And who do you practice with here? You got any good players that you can play Yeah, with? I, I currently share a table with Peter Ebden. Um, I have a few players down, Rory McLeod, um, Mark Joyce. So I've got, yeah, I'm in a good little, good little spot for practice partners. Yeah, nice, brilliant. We've got some challenges for you today. I've set up a few different, kind of different exercises, so... Shall we see how we get on? Yeah, let's do it, yeah. Yeah? In your opinion, who do you think in snooker plays good safety? It's obviously a massive part of the game. Um, I think if you're going to be a top player, you've got to have a good safety game. Probably the one that springs to mind is probably the most recent winner, John Higgins. Um, his safety games on really puts you in positions that a lot of players could, could never put you in. So, yeah, I'd probably say John Higgins is the best. OK. All right, well, we're going to see how good mine and your safety is today. OK. Mine ain't been too good lately, so... No. I don't know about yours. <laughs> yours has been a lot better, because obviously you've done well in Shanghai, so you yeah. must have been playing some good stuff out there. Got three reds up there, so I'm going to give we're both going to have three attempts each. And the idea is, is to try and for every colour you can hit, you get ten points. Right. Right. So I'm going to have my first three attempts. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Away. It's close. Oh, give me ten. Oh, I missed it. Let's get there. One out of three. Ten points. Sure. I'm happy with one out of three. So I've got ten points. You'll go. I'll be happy with one out of three, to be honest. Good luck, go for it. I've seen your safety, you're a good safety player, so I don't need to get two I'm happy with this if it reaches. Aye, aye. Go on. First go. Oh. Ten points. Oh, it's turned. It's turned away, I know. It's turned back in, yes. Green. Two out of three, I'm, 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 I expected that, really. Yeah, thanks very you much. happy with that? Yeah, very happy, yeah. yeah. Ten behind. This is about long ball potting, so I set up three different types of long ball here. I went first in the safeties, so I'm going to make you go first in okay. the long ones. Pressure's on. Oh, yeah. Clean as a whistle. Oh, three out of three. Happy with that. 
talking about long ball quite and who would you say in the game and when I say the modern era I'm probably going back to when so Dave is coming to the game, so around the 1980s. Mm -hmm. Who would you say over them years was probably the best long ball putter that you've seen in the game? You, you've got to say Judd Trump, I suppose, as, as the top top long putter. Um, you've got Murphy, Robertson. Um, but yeah, I mean, Alex Higgins as well. You know, he potted some outrageous long balls. At the moment, you've got 50 out of 60. I've got 10 out of 30, so the pressure's on me now. Two out of three. Ain't bad. I want to know who you think is uh, the top rest player in the game. The first one that comes to mind is probably Jimmy. Yeah. He's obviously very natural talent. Um, and yeah, I think growing up from a young age, you, you learn to use the rest because of your height, obviously. But a close one, I'd probably say Sean Murphy. I think it's my turn to go first. Mm -hmm. So we've got two rest shots here, one down either side. Yeah. The challenge you hit the magical 100 100 mark i really enjoyed it and uh, i just want to say well done obviously in shanghai mm -hmm. thanks very much and there's a really nice story but i remember peter ebden coming up to me about seven seven years ago it must have been he said to me he said i've seen a new guy his name's kieran wilson he said i've been practicing he said he's gonna win tournaments and i was like really he went yeah yeah, yeah trust me and uh you kind of, you, I see you come on the scene, I see you've, you know, you've had a few results and then to kind of see you make that breakthrough at Shanghai, you know, um, I know Peter knows his game and he, and he spotted, he's, he was right on this occasion and he was right with Ding as well, so, mm, you know, um, I know everyone might have only just seen you, but amongst the snooker world, you're highly respected amongst the players and uh, you've got all it takes really to, to go all the way, so. Thanks very much. Had a great day. Cheers, Ronnie. Thanks for having Thank me, Dan. Cheers. And, uh, good luck for the rest of the season. Thanks, mate. Cheers. This season. Thanks, mate. Cheers.